this is just a seed for the future harvest, and we can rejoice in that. Um, yeah, man, I'm just happy to be here, happy to see everybody. Ten and under, y'all can go back. We, we about to uh, just dive in. Amen? We about to dive in. Amen. We about to eat. This is the main course, okay? You know, I see people get more excited when they bring your steak at Applebee's. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know what I mean? You got your shrimp and everything, and they like, ooh, taking pictures. That's crazy, right? Like, you take pictures in Applebee's, but then you come to church, it's like, oh, blessed be the Lord. Let's have that same enthusiasm. And but thank you. Thank you. That, that, same, that same promotion spirit. <laughs> Applebee's ain't paying you for your promotion. Amen. You know what I'm saying? The gold cart place ain't paying you for no promotion. Amen. But God calls us laborers that will have a harvest. So I'm grateful that we're going to have harvest. So, hey, man, we about to, we about to jump in the word of the Lord. Uh, let's pray. So, Father, we just thank you that you have already beat us here. You're here. Uh, we don't have to uh, ask and beg and plead. All we have to do is believe and uh, acknowledge. So we just thank you. We acknowledge that you're here. Uh, we thank you for your presence, Father. Nothing happens without your spirit. So we just say, Holy Spirit, have your way. Uh, whatever you want to say, plant the seeds in your children so transformation can take place. Father, let nobody leave out of here the same way they came in. At least leaving out of here with a thought of, of them just doing some inspection and inventory on themselves so they can become who you call them to be. So they can shine bright like a diamond in this world. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. All right, y'all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. All right, so uh, this uh, month, um, the Lord has put in my heart to uh, preach on a, uh, the subject uncommon, okay? So uncommon. When we become believers, uh, God, when God uh, welcomes us into the kingdom, it is a totally uncommon lifestyle. It is not culture. It's counter-cultural, okay? Amen. Right? His kingdom is the upside down, right? You go high, I mean, go low to go high. You give to get, right? All those gr great things, okay? Y'all looking at me like it's crazy, okay? Go, go out there on a the corner and preach the gospel and let me see how culture look at you. But heaven and the kingdom ain't looking down on you like that because it's common. Amen. Okay, so uncommon things. When God welcomes us into the kingdom, when we say we want to be saved, we want to be in eternity with the Lord, he welcomes you as an invitation to an uncommon life. There are some things that have to be uncommon in order to follow Jesus. You cannot stay all the way the same and follow Christ. Hear me, okay? Some things have to change. Some things might take longer than others, but there are some transformations that have to take place. Huh. He meets us where we are, but he loves us enough to call us higher. He meets you, he meets you at who culture and uh, environment and who you think you are. He calls you to be who he made you to be. And that takes some transformation and some uncommon things. Okay? So, last week, I'm going to test y'all. What did we talk about? Uncommon what? Hey! All right. Uncommon faith. In order to walk this walk with Christ, we have to have a faith that is above and beyond and uncommon than non-believers. Okay? So, and uh, our, our, the theme that God has placed in our heart, my heart for this uh, house is... Hey, there we go. Do it again. All, all right. To be all in, you have to live an uncommon life. Because we got a lot of halfway, halfway crooks, as Ma Beat used to say. <laughs> Ain't no such thing as halfway crooks. You know what I'm saying? We have a lot of halfway lukewarm believers who are making God look weak, silly, and insignificant. So we have to live an uncommon life to be able to display the power, the glory, and the majesty of God. Amen? 
Okay, so when we're all in, it leads to an uncommon lifestyle. All uncommon means is out of the ordinary or unusual. And this is the verse that I'm building this foundation on. It's 1 Corinthians 1, 27 to 29. And it says, but God has chosen the foolish, uh, foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. God changes everything. Y'all looking at me with that, with that tone of voice. God changes everything. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. There are people who think they are very, very wise, and to God, they are as foolish as they come. Because they think, hold on, I got 20, it should be 27 to 29. I'll read it. It says, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong, and the insignificant things of the world and the despised God has chosen. How many people are grateful that pe- people who have thrown you away, God can, you, God can still use you? Amen. Like the world has thrown you away, kicked you out of their whole sanctuary, but God is like, welcome, because this is the place you need to be. Yeah. I was sitting there thinking about, you know, uh, relationships and things that have come and gone with people, and I was like, God, I'm so... I was looking, <laughs> I'm weird like this, don't worry, you'll, you'll figure it out. I'm watching the trash can, right? I'm watching the garbage, the big garbage truck come take the trash from my house. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, even trash has a destination and a purpose. Like what I discarded still has a destination and a purpose. I said, God, I am so grateful that some people threw me in the trash. I am so grateful. We need to be grateful that people discarded us and thrown us in the trash. Because without you being in the trash, the garbage truck can't take you to your purpose. See, we we get so upset and we get so disgruntled because we're riding in the garbage truck. I don't care. As long as I get to my destination. Because guess what? He's going to use the garbage truck, the foolish, to confound the wise. How did you get here? We didn't see you because you were buried under trash. Oh, come on. God like to do some things sometime incognito. <laughs> seeing, if, seeing if y'all won't. Seeing if y'all won't. He liked to do things incognito because he's like, I don't want them to see what's going on because I can't get glory out of it if it happens right now. I need I need them to think that you have been buried, killed, discarded and trashed away. Because then when you come out like a phoenix. In front of their face, just a shining. And all you can say is. Nothing but God. He gets the glory, not us. Family, today I'm going to talk about something that we do every day. It is something that can be done in various dialects, various tones, or even done unknowingly or knowingly. It's a buzzword in culture these days, and there are even classes and college curriculums built around this, and you can even earn a degree in this field. The thing I'm talking about is communication. Right now, there's communication happening as I'm speaking, some verbal, some nonverbal, some knowingly, some unknowingly. The kind, of commution, the kind of communication I'm talking about is biblical communication, which in other words is prayer. Prayer. Prayer, all prayer is, is communication with God. Okay? Prayer serves as a mean of communication with God. The challenge with most people is that our prayers are more monologues than dialogues. It seems to be more one-way communication and not conversation with God. Now, don't get me wrong. There are instances where we communicate with God and the response is not warranted. Like when we say, God, you are holy. God, I thank you. God, I give you glory. 
God, your majesty is in this place. God, I thank you for delivering me from evil. God, I thank you for not snatching my kid. God, I thank you for holding my fists and my mouth and my feet and sometimes my face. Me, me too. <laughs> that face, is, I, I, it do its own thing sometimes. <laughs> but those are the type of, it's usually praise and worship are the things that don't warrant a response from God. Oh, it's a one-way communication. We are giving great, we are giving, we are being, we're giving God gratitude for the things that he have done in our lives. But for the most part, prayer is to be conversation with him. So I got a question with you. For you, when was the last time you prayed and after just sat and be quiet? Be honest with yourself. You didn't say, oh, Lord, got up and then up, oh, left the meat in the stove. <laughs> oh, my TV show coming on at 830, so God, I got to get this in real quick. Oh, Lord, the baby, the baby's crying. All of these things are relevant, right? All of these things. Uh, life happens, right? Let's be real. Life happens, right? But I love you and remember that. We do what we want to do when we want to do it and how we want to do it. We don't have time. We make time. <laughs> Can I tell you about something about time? See, this is the thing I'm learning about time, okay? Time is an investment. We invest our time in things that bring great return for us. So I can tell very easily what you deem important in your life by what you spend time on and time with. And sometimes, let's be honest, prayer is not an investment that we put in very much. You know, I had to check myself one time a couple years ago. Uh, it was a situation happening, and... um. This came out of my mouth, and this is tradition, right? This, this is religion. Well, all we can do is pray. I was like, who? The Holy Spirit caught me. I said, whoa, what you mean all we can do? Yeah. That's the greatest thing we can do. Yeah. Like, why is that the last thing that we resort to? Oh, man, it's more, it's more, it's more month than money. More, more bills than I got money. Let, let me figure this out. Instead of saying, hey, you know what I got now. Lord, you know what's in my bank account. And, and, and here, I'm going to put in another one that we need to do. Lord, forgive me for not stewarding my monthly money correctly. Yes. Forgive me for all my Starbucks. <laughs> forgive me for all my 7-Eleven Slurpees. Forgive me for my Krispy Kremes. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? See, this is the thing that I'm learning, and I had to learn the hard way in the kingdom, is that uh, God's principles work, number one. He works. God's principles work for anybody who works them. They're principles. But I've done a little bit of study. I like, I like people and I like sociology, and it seems to me that non-believers have way more discipline than believers. I know jokers who are non-believers who slept in the one bed uh, in a what do you call those the the, uh, the one the studio apartment on the floor on the floor living off peanut butter and jelly because they believe something that he put in their heart and they're going for they're non-believers and end up being great in their field why because they sacrifice. They believed. That's faith. Yeah. We talked about that last week. Last week, That's faith. It's a muscle. You got to work it. It's not something you can just say, okay, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe that you going to be, I'm going to be a best-selling author, and you ain't read a book, let alone write one. <laughs> Lord, I believe that I'm going to lose these 30 pounds while you're sitting at a full buffet table. You get what I'm saying? It's like, 
It's like we, we pray, we communicate with God, but our heart ain't aligned. Our heart is not aligned. It amazes me. Okay. Remember, I love you. Okay. So I'm, I done got you happy. Now I'm about to bring you down a little bit. <laughs> it amazes me sometimes how in our most difficult seasons, when we feel God has turned his back on us, or when our experience is t- trying to tell us that God is not there, when we need to pray the most, we don't. <laughs> and I'm about to tell you why. So hold on to your seat and get ready to get some Band-Aids. Okay? It's hard to communicate with somebody you can't manipulate. It is very hard to communicate with a person you can't manipulate because they know you. He sees your heart. Some people, he knows my heart. Yeah, baby, he do. (laughs) Unfortunately. It is hard to give your heart to somebody that is not easy to swindle. It is hard to communicate with a person that you know knows you. We already know, this, this is why it's also hard to communicate. Can I, I'm going to be real with y'all. We know what we got to do. We just don't want to hear it because then it's reinforced. <laughs> We already know the remedy for the situation that we are in. What this is this is why I think this is why I know dealing with people. This is why I know transformation in Christ is so hard. Is because when we communicate with him, the answer is not us changing scenery. It's not from us getting from A to B or taking a vacation. It's a change in us. Because we know we got it. We we the problem. And we don't want, do you know the the hardest thing for any American or any person to do is to do the A word, accountability? It's hard. It's hard to sit there and say, it's me. It ain't my wife, it ain't my kids, it ain't my boss, it ain't my house, it ain't my car, it ain't my clothes, it ain't my bank account. It's me, oh Lord, it's me standing in the need of prayer. I went old school on y'all. I'm going to tell you the day when my prayer life changed. Me and my family, we went on vacation to Tennessee. This is probably like 2016. We're standing in line. Uh, I think we're, I don't know, I think we were going on a white water raft and something. I don't even know. It was 2016. I'm getting old with my memory. Anyway, uh, we st- we're standing in line. And um, standing in line, and uh, we're sitting there. We, you know, us laughing, joking, having a ball. It was hot as I don't know what out there. Um, and so I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, I see these three ladies behind us. They get on their knees, and they start praying. And I'm like, they had on their, um, I don't want to be disrespectful. What's the thing, the Muslim shops? Hijabs, hijabs. They had their hijabs on. And they were on their knees in gravel dirts, praying to a false god. Hear me. Picture this. They are in public in a line full of people about to enjoy something. But they, th- they invested because they thought or they believed that praying right then will give them a return on their harvest. Right then, the Holy Spirit, I ain't have to even say nothing to me. I just looked and said, I got you. 
They're praying to a false god. Hear me. He doesn't answer. He doesn't hear. And they deemed it important enough to act undignified in a crowd full of people. No, that's, uh, they doing something next door. Yeah, that's a drill next door. <laughs> Hold on, they, and they happen to be Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> But this is a thing. This is how this is how God sees prayer. Yeah. It's something that you invest in. No matter where you are, who's around you, who's not around you. Like he's saying when when it hits you, you need to go. But this is a thing that we take for granted. Ah, I pray when I get home. I pray at 930, like I always do. We have to switch this up. We have to get an uncommon prayer life. We have to get an uncommon prayer life. You only, your life can only go as far as the person you communicate with the most. Yep, drop the mic on that one. Your life can only go as far as the person you communicate with the most. The person you communicate the most is who you're going to be like. I mean, it, there's no, yeah, there's no more, it, there's no if ands, or buts about it. Like, like my son, we sit there and talk, he sounds like me. Mannerisms and all, because we communicate the most. He's with me more than in, in day than anywhere else. This is the thing. It's like, hear me. I understand the challenges in prayer. I, I do. I understand them. Because the hardest thing for somebody to do is to look in the mirror and say, I am not what I see. That's the hardest thing to do. Is to look in the mirror and say, okay, Lord. I know I got myself to this place. And I know only you can get me out. Yeah. Help me. Because in that moment, he's going to show you you. Have you ever been talking to somebody and then like on a cell phone and then the communication gets a little fuzzy? But it's weird because it's like, we start yelling, like that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, because I, and, 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 and cookies, and, 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 and chocolate chip, and they're like, huh, what? <laughs> cookies, chocolate chip. <laughs> like, but that's not the issue. Yeah. The issue is the connection. Yeah. So when we're in times and in places and in spaces when we can't hear God or it's a little fuzzy it's not because he ain't talking it's because we ain't close enough we ain't by that tower and it takes an uncommon faith number one and an uncommon prayer life to say no matter what I'm going through, no matter what season I'm in, no matter how I feel, I need to keep this connection because it's the most, most important thing in my life. Some of us, we're going through things right now because we got, I'm going to be hunted, we got a whack prayer life and might not have one at all, but we call ourselves followers of Christ. How can you follow when you ain't taking instruction? How can you follow when you don't know instruction? <laughs> also, too, there's this thing in Christendom and Christianese where the, the yeah, Christianese, we, we think the, the projection or the tone of my voice exudes power or forces him to move. Hear me, Lord! 
Can I tell you something? You know, you know what scares me is a person who is nice, calm, and quiet. This is the parent I'm scared of. This was my mama. You hear me? <laughs> she wouldn't raise her voice. She would say, you know, sit your tail down. It's going to be a problem. And I sat my tail down because that quiet held power. It wasn't in the tones. It wasn't in the projection of the voice. It wasn't even in the stature of the person. I knew her heart, her mind, and her spirit (laughs) aligned on that statement. (laughs) And if I did not do what she said, I will feel the wrath of the consequences. This is the same thing in prayer, we don't have to be sitting there, oh, God, and, and come by here. And, and you know, sometimes, hear me, I'm not saying that sometimes it might not take that. I'm just saying, let, let's be more, let's be more uh, interested in having our heart, our mouth, and our mind aligned with what we are saying to God. Because I'm going to tell you... The, all right, I'm going here. This ain't even in my notes. We, we, we've, we've been taught in, in, in church to sanitize prayer. You could be angry as a freaking uh, riled up possum. That's angry. And you're going to sit there and say, well, oh, Lord, Father, art thou? I cometh to you in the need of prayer. Please help me. He, and your heart is like growling. <laughs> it's okay to say, God, I'm angry right now. Yeah. My heart ain't aligned with you. I'm upset. I want to cry. And I'm wondering where you are. And if you don't come down right now and arrest my hands, my tongue, and my feet, somebody's going to arrest my hands and my feet. But he, people think, people think the definition, only definition of pure is clean. The definition of pure, another definition of pure is I'm vulnerable. I'm open. I'm letting you see I am pure in front of you. I'm, I'm opening my heart to you and I'm telling you, God, this is how I feel. And he's like. I've been there. I know exactly how Jesus on the side is like, yeah, I've been there too, man. I know exactly how you feel. Because I wanted to slap them disciples upside their head so many times. <laughs> it wasn't nothing but the Holy Spirit that held me. This, this is what intrigued me about, about prayer. Jesus' disciples was, was with him for three and a half years. They saw him do miracles, signs, wonders, raise people from the dead, cast out demons. They saw him do great lectures on mountains, and his wisdom was like surpass all understanding. And, and, and the only thing they asked him, teach us how to pray. Don't believe me? Let's go to it. Luke 11, 1. Luke 11, 1. And it says, it, ha- it happened that while Jesus was praying in a certain place, when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John also taught his disciples. Th- leaders, if, if there's any leaders in here, if you weren't about leadership or anything like this, this is, how, this is how you identify a true leader, okay? The disciples were leaders because they didn't ask Jesus they, they didn't ask Jesus to teach them what they did. They asked him to teach them how they did it. They said, I don't, I don't want, I, I, I want you to show me how to fish. I don't want you to just give them to me. Because you're doing all of this stuff. There has to be a secret to your power. There, there has to be something that you are doing out of the ordinary or uncommon that we're not doing and that everybody is not doing because you're getting a result that ain't nobody getting. How do I do what you do? How do I get what you have? Which is another thing, another principle of how the Lord is about transformation. 
you got to do something, something else. You can't stay the same. Listen, if you want any change in your life, you have to change. It is so, like, a quote, an inspirational quote, and a podcast without movement or application is not going to change your life. Right now, we, will, we live in a world that's overwhelmed with information and deficit in application. We can get all the information at the click of a, a button, at the, at the click of a face ID. We can have all the information in the world from here to Timbuktu. But when it's time to apply, now we got a problem. Because that means I have to admit that I'm not there yet. Humble yourself before God, and he will exalt you in due time. Prayer is used to get a revelation about information, so when the application comes, it leads to transformation. I'm going to say that again. Prayer is used to get revelation about information so when, we, when the application comes, it leads to transformation. I say this, and I'm going to say this to him blue in the face. You heard me say this again. Don't pray if you're not going to obey. <laughs> Prayer is instruction to becoming who he's called you to be. Because guess what? The only person that can tell you is the creator. And sometimes you're too busy to hear, so he's going to bring it through somebody else. This is why it's horrible for you to be by yourself. Hear me. Where two or three are gathered, he's there. When you're by yourself, the enemy's there. And if you are, if you are buried under circumstances, you are not going to be able to hear clearly. The connection is going to be up, it, uh, it, cookie, chicken, up. And you're going to be like, huh? What? And then he's going to send a text. Bing! And the text is going to have instruction from somebody that God gave him. Or you're going to get a phone call because God placed you on somebody's heart. This is why, hear me, this is side note. If God places somebody in your heart to contact, contact them ASAP. Even if he don't give you nothing to say, just say, hey, how are you? God placed you on my heart and he'll give you what to say. Or maybe he'll just have you shut up. So you can just be just be a soundboard for a minute. Because there are a lot of people going through a lot of things these days, man. And they are so buried. And they can't hear God. And God wants to use you, he wants to use us as vessels to be able to communicate to his children. That's why we got to stay in prayer because sometimes it ain't for you. Sometimes he wanted to get the communication through to you to get it through you for somebody else. This is why we got to stay, we got to stay in connection with God. We got to stay communicate with God. It has to be uncommon, uncommon to the point where he becomes so real to you. Where he becomes so real to you. You sitting there talking to your child is like, who are you talking to that? I'm just talking to the Lord. I'm just, I'm just having a conversation with the Lord. We, we sitting here and we just talking, we wrapping the taste because he's your friend. He wants to be your friend. But he's also your Lord. And that's why we can't communicate with him sometimes. Because it's hard to call your friend Lord. <laughs> can, can I go further? It's hard to call your friend master. That's why a lot of us have problems when our friends elevate. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go here too. Because it's hard to see somebody going here and we still here. Not knowing that 
you humbling yourself will get you here. See, it's not about, uh, it's not, God is using the, sh- the weird things to confine, confound the world. This here, I'm, I didn't mean to go here, but I'm going to go here. I remember back in the days when I went to, I can't even remember the name of the church. It had like five names. But anyway, <laughs> the thing I loved back then that is missing now is servitude. Let the pastor's shoe come unlaced. <laughs> Somebody up here tying it. Let the pastor sneeze. Let the pastor get, get a, little, a, little swe- a little sweat of bead right here. Somebody up there. <laughs> but what happened is, is that some irresponsible people perverted it. That's all the enemy needed to do was let you watch it. So now it's horrible to you. I ain't doing that. I ain't tying the pastor's shoe. I ain't wiping his brow. I ain't getting him no water. I ain't worshiping him. You better not worship them. God is the only one who gets worship. But there's one thing that the Bible says that we are supposed to do for our leaders, and that's honor. It's required. This is the thing. But, okay, Lord, I'm about, I'm about to break this too. I'm, I'm about to cut this in the middle, right? If I can judge somebody, my life better be right. You better not put your mouth on nobody if you got skeletons. So whether the leader is corrupt or not, it's not your way, place to judge. Take your plank out. Take your, what do they say? Take your plank out before you take a splint out of somebody else's. Because you're doing what the Bible says, not what man says. So I'm, I'm doing this to the Lord. Because the pastor and the leader got to stand in front of God one day and account for all that. We have no place. I'm doing what the Bible is telling me to do. And guess what? If my prayer life is uncommon... I'm not even going to go there. (laughs) If my prayer life is uncommon, God will give me an inside to be able to help as opposed to judge. He will get me in there beside them to help, not to criticize. This is a thing. We, oh, I don't know why God is going here, but I'm going. This is the thing that burns my biscuits with the church. We got so many people, the church ain't this, and the church ain't that, and the church ain't this, and the church ain't that. Well, get your butt in there and make it. Purpose is not just about you. I'm going to give you a purpose lesson. You can know your purpose by what brings you joy and what breaks your heart. Those two things is where you find purpose. So if something is in the church and is breaking your heart, Help! 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 Don't stand there and point fingers with your hypocritical self. No, it ain't perfect. It will never be perfect until he comes back. Not knowing that you placing judgment on something that God has deemed holy is only going to come back on you. And especially these days, we have to have an uncommon prayer life, y'all, because we need to be next to leaders and into rooms so we can have effect. God needs us to change some stuff at the top, but he ain't going to put nobody up there. They ain't going to listen at the bottom. He wants you to place you in rooms with kings and queens and leaders, CEOs, CFOs, billionaires, millionaires, but you don't even listen when he says, stop eating the cake. You think you're going to walk into a room full of billionaires and say, can I pray for you when they got everything in the world? No. (laughs) I can answer that right now. This is a thing, man. Prayer builds your faith and it builds, prayer builds the boldness in you. 
It builds the uncommon boldness in you that say, okay, Lord, if you ask me to touch this person's knee, I know you're asking me to touch this person's knee. And if it gets healed or not, let your will be done. I'm just doing what you're telling me to do. If you tell me to shut my mouth when I know a million percent they're wrong, because somebody turned off the AC for me, people in here fidgeting. <laughs> if God, if the Holy Spirit is telling you to shut your mouth, all right. Oh, okay, y'all. Can Discernment does not just tell you about other people's stuff. It tells you it's about your own, too. The Holy Spirit holds your tongue, too. Well, it should. See, oh, all right. I don't know what he's doing, but I, oh, yeah, okay, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to. Yeah, that's what some spirits are doing right now. <laughs> that's what some spirits are doing right now, <laughs> crying. <sighs> the reason why we feel such a pressure in these times is because God is looking across the earth for people that he can trust. All he needs is to trust you. The greatest thing in the world is for the God of the universe to say, I trust her. That's why you feel such a pressure because he wants to trust you. He's trying to get you separated from you so he can put him inside of you so he can put you where he wants you to be. That's why you're feeling such a pressure. That's why I think you see things hitting left, right, up, down, because he know if he don't allow some stuff to touch you, then he can't get in you so he can move you. We need to be more responsive and not reactional. Because our responses and our initiated reaction is going to keep us from getting to where he's calling us to be. Because he knows if something goes wrong, not only you going to make yourself look silly, but you're going to make the kingdom look silly because you profess that you are a follower of Christ. This is why. Ah, I'm going to go into this. Sometimes we petition God for something in Jesus name. No, no I'm going to go back. Let's go to James 4, 3. <laughs> Somebody know that one. Oh, mm. oh, Jesus, Lord. Help me, please. <laughs> You ask and do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives or wrong heart so that you may spend what you request on your pleasures. Sometimes we petition God for something in Jesus' name, but in our hearts, when we get it, we want to put our name on it. Yeah, man, I grinded for that car. I work, well, I work for where I am today. I study my behind off of them grades. All that might be true, but without the breath in your lungs. During that time, you wouldn't even be standing here or sitting here today. The breath was not given by you, nor did you even deserve it. It's all by the grace and mercy of the loving God that you are here minute to minute and hour to hour and day to day and month to month and year to year. Please hear me. You ain't self-made nothing. You are God made and God breathed. You are breathing his breath. You are breathing the breath that he put into Adam. Once your breath goes, your spirit goes, you gone. Like I do the exercise, I hold my breath. God said, you think you in control, hold your breath. Yeah, how, how long are you going to do that? 
And you got some people just hold it till they pass out and just start breathing on their own. Not knowing that they're not breathing on their own. This is a thing. God knows our heart. Lord, let me hit the lottery. How many of us have said that? Every time I drove past that one billion billboard, I was like, Lord, uh, you knew what I'd do for the kingdom. You know what I do for the kingdom, Lord. Yeah. And then he says, whose kingdom? <laughs> whose kingdom? Yours or mine, buddy? Your, your kingdom or, or, or mine, son? And I say, mm, I'm going to be real with you. Probably some of both. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of both, you know, I, Ride up to the kingdom and something good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Help out the kingdom a little bit. But this is the thing, man. We have, that's what I'm saying. Don't sanitize your prayers, man. If you, if you feel, say, look, God, look, 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 look. If I have any selfish motives in me, because you might not even know they're there. Say, so, Father, if there's any hard, Hardness, if there's any bitterness, if there's any anger, if there's any frustration, Father, please just, just take it out of me. Reveal it. Oh, okay. I'm going to go here. I don't know where it is, but I'm going to just talk to husbands for a minute. I'm going to have to look this up. Sorry, y'all. Because there are some things that God commands us to do and that is why our prayers are not being uh, answered for our wives. Y'all can find it later. I don't got time. But the Bible says that we need, basically it says we need to love our wives correctly and if we don't, our prayers will be hindered. Don't believe me, look it up. Somebody look, look it up right now. Ephesians. Ephesians 525. I, I want to read this because I want to get this in your spirit. Ephesians 525. Starts at 25. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. It's easy to sacrifice your flesh, but will you sacrifice your spirit? Meaning, transformation. Will you sacrifice your pride for your wife? Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Husband, loves your wives just as Christ also loved. Man, that's what I'm talking about. EJ, appreciate that, man. Husband, loves your wife just as Christ so loved the church and gave himself up for her. Next. Oh. That's cool. I got it. So that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle, but that she would be holy and blameless. So husband also ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself, for no one has ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ also does the church, because we are a part of his body. For this a man shall for this reason a man shall leave his mother and be joined and to become one in the flesh. The mystery is great, but I'm speaking reference to the Christ of the church. Nevertheless, if you individually, each husband has to love his wife, and the wife must be uh, so no, nah, that's not the one I'm looking for, but anyway. Husbands, we, hear me. We have a different responsibility. We have to have a super uncommon prayer life. Because we are called to lead. In order to lead, we need instruction. In order to get instruction, we need to be at the feet of God. What is it? Oh, all right. We need to be at the feet of God to get instruction. But what's happening is, oh, Jesus, we're at the feet of podcasts. We're at the feet of books and not the Bible. We're at the feet of people's opinions. We're, we're, we're at the, can I tell you, we're at the, uh, 
We're at the feet of culture. Saying what we get and what we don't get and how we don't receive and how we don't and we don't have a safe space and we don't do this and we don't do that. Can I tell you something? At the feet of God, it's always a safe place. Yeah, I didn't get a lot of amens with that one. The safest place is in the presence of the Lord. The safest place is at the feet of the master. The safest place is in his word. The safest place is humbling yourself before God so he may exalt you in due time. The safest place is getting instruction for your family and for your life so you can be prosperous. We want prosperity. We want to be abundant. We want to multiply. But we don't want to sit down, listen, throw away our pride, and humble ourselves in God's feet. 1 Peter 3, 7, your husband's in the same way. Live with your wives in an understanding way as with someone weaker since she is a woman and show her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life so that your prayers will not be hindered. Whoo! I didn't even mean to go here, but he want me to go here with men. Mm. The ascension in your life or lack thereof is directly correlated with how you treat and love your wife, men. That's why we get so frustrated. Women, y'all got a place in this too now. It It takes two to tango. But this is the thing about marriage. Regardless of what my spouse is doing, I got to do my job. We can't, we, we, can't, we can't dictate how we love and what we love with by the response of our spouse. And can I, can I do another thing too? We can't love our spouse the way we want to be loved. That's another thing. I think I need to do some more marriage. Yeah, I will. <laughs> but this goes back to prayer, man. We don't realize that there are things that are hindering our prayer men. This is why we have to have an uncommon prayer life so that God's will can be done on the earth. God is not coming down by a pillar of fire no more. He has a Holy Spirit inside each and every one of us to move our crap in limbs and our mouth and our bodies using our resources that he allows us to have to maneuver and to shape another generation. This is what's happening. This is what God is doing. He's trying to get things in place. He's trying to clean his vessels. He's trying to get the attention. Sometimes he got to, that's right, spank him on the bottom, just like that. Sometimes he got to spank us and say, hey, Eric, you're going the wrong way. I like that. I got sound effect. (laughs) This is the thing that's, Hear me, God uses adversity to propel us. He uses his adversity to shake us. He uses adversity to make us. But we're so focused on what we want to do and how we want to move. And she got it and they got it and we ain't. And how come? And, and God is saying, stop it! <laughs> Get with me in a quiet space so you can pray, and I'll tell you every single thing that's going on. Because guess what? One thing that prayer does, having an uncommon prayer life does, is it changes your perspective. Let's go to uh, 2 Kings 6, 15 to 17. Now when the attendant of the man of God had risen early and gone out, behold, an army with horses and chariots was circling the city. And his servant said to him, this is hopeless, my master. What are we to do? And he said, don't be afraid, for those who are with us are greater than those who are with them. Then Elisha prayed and said, Lord, please open his eyes so that he may see. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Prayer not only changes how you see, it changes what you see. 
Elijah said, hey, Lord, open my servant's eyes so he can not only see what different, he can see how different. And not only he prayed in front of the servant to give him a model. Now the servant knows, hey, all I got to do is pray. And God is going to come through. Do you know how cool it is? That's why I like seeing y'all with, with, with little baby up here praying. She already growing up praying. It's an example. They watch us. An uncommon prayer life is a catalyst to an uncommon lifestyle. We want lifestyles that are not conducive to our prayer life. God is not a God of get. God is not a God of collecting. God is a God of sustaining. We want to just get somewhere. He's like, I'm not about that. I want you to get there and stay. I want you to get there and not only get there, but elevate. That's why I got to get all these things on. That's why I got to touch your hip. That's why I got to touch it, because when you get there, you, you'll remember me. Yeah. Yes. That's why I got to touch that thing, because I know you. Yeah. I know you'll get to that place and something happen, and you'll quickly forget where you came from. But as soon as you try to run, you think, oh, mm, yep, yep, mm -mm, thank you, Lord. Yeah, because unfortunately, some of us need that thorn. Yes. Some of us are that hard-headed that we need to be pricked every time, because <laughs> he knows but that's a good thing because it, it, it lets you know that you are in his will. Yes. Don't think it's bad that you're being afflicted. Rejoice. Because I know I'm in the right space. An uncommon life, I'm going to say this again is a catalyst to an uncommon lifestyle. We have to have a prayer life that is conducive to the lifestyle of Christ. We have to have a prayer life that is uh, aligned with the lifestyle of Christ. Prayer is not an event, it's a lifestyle. A lifestyle of prayer, a lifestyle of communication with God, a lifestyle of walking with him, a lifestyle of obeying him, a lifestyle of saying, nevertheless, your will be done. Because the days is getting short. <laughs> we almost halfway through 2024. Hey, y'all, we got to speed up our clocks. The reason why we feel like we're being crushed so much because time is just speeding up. And, 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 and the sky is going to crack soon. But he got to put some things in place first. And he need to do it with us. Not even need to, he wants to. He wants to put you in position he wants to, he wants to, he wants to go ahead and place you in the places that you're praying for, but it has to be for a different motive. Yes. Yeah. And as the old folks say, your innards better be right. <laughs> because we got a work to do. If he tell you pray, pray. If he tell you give, give. If he tell you don't go, don't go. If he tell you go, Go. If he tell you shut your mouth, if he tells you I got this, yeah, that's the thing right there. I felt that one. If he say don't take revenge, I got this. Don't shoot back that per my last email. Don't be Googling, going through TikTok, figuring out how you can curse somebody out in business language. 
Not chat GPT and stuff. But this is a real thing, man. Prayer is our defense. Prayer is our, that is how we war. Don't war with these, man. Warm on your knees or wherever you are. You don't have to be on your knees. Sometimes you don't, it's not, sometimes you can walk. Sometimes you lay on your belly, put your face on the floor. Whatever he tell you to do. No diddy. Whatever he tell you to do. I know, I got to come back, don't I? Come back. <laughs> I got to come back. <laughs> I got to come back. But now, nah, man, prayer is essential, y'all. Hear me. Hear me. All For y'all that have been in war, right, the best way that you can annihilate your enemy is by, number one, stopping communication. Once you stop communication, you can do whatever the world you want to do. You cut, off their ed- you cut off their communication, and you cut off their resources. They're yours. See, th- but this is what happened to us. <laughs> our resources get cut off, so we cut off our own communication. The enemy ain't even got the second step. We do it on our own. When our resources get cut, we need communication ASAP. We need communication ASAP so we can get back in alignment and say, God, is this you or is this me? Ah, not even going to go there on that one. I might need to do a part two to get y'all out of here. But prayer is essential. man. I, I can't stress how important communication is with God. Because without communication, you're dead. You're dead without communication. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. I want y'all to leave with this verse right here. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. I, I, w- I don't want to. I don't want to go past this one. There's a little word in here, a little two word, a little 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 word that says in everything. It doesn't say because everything. You can be in something and still give thanks, and not be happy about the situation. For this is the will of God. For you in Christ Jesus. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will for you in Christ Jesus. Pray without ceasing. That is how you change your perspective. That is how you change not only what you see, but how you see. Prayer is something that, if cultivated, will shift the entirety of your life. When prayer becomes a lifestyle, the uncommon becomes common. The miraculous seems normal, and obedience becomes a way of life. Maybe today you haven't communicated with God in a while, and you felt like he doesn't want to hear from you. (laughs) All I can say is what good father doesn't want to hear from his child? He's waiting to hear you cry out for him so that he can respond to you. Maybe you haven't communicated with him at all. Listen, maybe you have never communicated with him. And you say, today I want to start. I want to make the decision to follow Christ. The Bible says all you have to do is confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, and you may be saved, but there's a part two. You're already saved, but you're not yet transformed. The thing that transforms you is the word of God. Finding a community to get in. Finding trustworthy people that you can be 
honest, open, and transparent in front of. Because God has a plan for your life and a purpose. And only he can tell you that. And the only way you can get the information is through prayer. So if you have not given your life to the Lord, do so today. And I want you to, I'm not one of them pastors that say he, he going to sugarcoat everything and he going to make no, now you became an enemy of the enemy. And he hates you. But we have a mighty God who has already won. And when you hide in the shadows of the Almighty, he will protect you and keep you safe. So, Father, right now, we just thank you that we have the opportunity to communicate with you. Father, let us not take it for granted that your son died so we can have communication with you. And Lord, speak to your children in a way that they would know that you speaking to them individually. You know your children, you made them. So Lord, let them know that you are hearing. And Father, whatever uh, impurities that are in our heart when we come to you, we ask that you remove those right now. We ask that you give us the boldness to be able to obey because it takes boldness to obey. It takes boldness to look in the mirror and say, I got to change. It takes boldness to say, my way ain't right. Let your will be done in my life. So, Father, we give you thanks. We give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise. Lord, may our prayer life become a lifestyle and not just for emergency contact. Let it, let it be a sincere communication and not out of seeking a genie. but let it be out of a pure revelation that you're God and that without you we are nothing but with you we are everything so we give you the glory the honor and the praise in the matchless name of Jesus we pray amen and amen we thank you father for today, uh, it is giving time. So I'm going to put that on the screen. What happened? Question? Okay. Also, too, I just want to thank you. I keep, y'all, please uh, forgive me. Charge it to the head and not the heart. I keep forgetting that we have an online family and an online community. So we just thank you, AMP online community, for watching. Um, I just consider it an honor and a blessing that the voice that God has given me goes throughout the world. And I'm not even conscious of that. It's weird. Uh, but we thank you again, and, and I hope and I pray that whatever the Lord has said today will resonate in your heart. Um, and if you got saved today, or give us some feedback. I don't care what it is. Let us know what's going on. Let us know what's going on in your heart. And uh, we'll see you next Sunday at 1030. All right, go ahead and cut, cut the everything. <laughs>